This is the Sabbath School lesson for the third quarter, 2021. Lesson 5 from the series Rest in Christ is titled Come to Me. It's ready for teaching on July 31 and I'm Percy Harold. Monday, July 26. Take my yoke upon you. Question. Read Matthew 11 verses 29 and 30. Why does Jesus command us to take his yoke right after he has invited us to give him our burdens and find true rest? Matthew eleven twenty eight and 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. After the first imperative, come, in Matthew eleven twenty eight, two more imperatives follow in Matthew eleven twenty nine. Take and learn focus the attention of the audience and the reader on Jesus. We are to take his yoke and learn from him. The intimate relationship in the Godhead between the Father and the Son, already intimated in Matthew eleven twenty five to 27 offers a powerful illustration that may explain the yoke metaphor in these verses. Matthew eleven twenty five to 27 At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. Both the Father and the Son are working unitedly to save humanity. While the yoke is a symbol of submission, as we see in Jeremiah 27, it also is a metaphor illustrating united purpose. In Jeremiah chapter 27, uh, the title of the chapter here is Symbol of the Bonds and Yokes. And it starts off, In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus says the Lord to me, Make for yourselves bonds and yokes, and put them on your neck, and send them to the king of Edom, the king of Moab, the king of the Ammonites, the king of Tyre, and the king of Sire, by the hand of the messengers, who come to Jerusalem, to Zedekiah, king of Judah. And command them to say to their masters, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Thus you shall say to your masters, I have made the earth, the man, and the beast that are on the ground, by my great power and by my outstretched arm, and have given it to whom it seemed proper to me. And now I have given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and the beasts of the field I have also given him to serve." And then it continues on, and uh, in verse 8 we read, And it shall be that the nation and kingdom which will not serve Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and which will not put its neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, that nation I will punish, says the Lord, with the sword, with the famine and the pestilence, until I have consumed them by his hands. And then um, verse 10 For they prophesy a lie to you, to remove you far from your land, and I will drive you out, and you will perish. But the nations that bring their necks under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him, I will let them remain in their own land, says the Lord, and they shall till it and dwell in it. I also spoke to Zedekiah, king of Judah, according to all these words, saying, Bring your necks under the yoke of the king of Babylon, and serve him and his people, and live. We submit to his yoke and accept the task he gives us to bless those around us. We are not carrying his yoke. We are just yoked to him because his yoke is easy and his burden is light, as it said in Matthew 11.30. The second imperative, learn from me, reiterates this concept. In Greek, the verb learn is connected to the term disciple. When we learn from Jesus, we are truly his disciples. Obedience and commitment are characteristics of discipleship.
Question, what is the difference between being heavy laden in verse 28 and taking up his yoke in verse 29 of Matthew 11? Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 and 29. Come to me, all you who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. The yoke was a common metaphor in Judaism for the law. Acts 15.10 uses it in reference to the law of circumcision. Now, therefore, why do you test God by putting a yoke on the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? Galatians 5 verse 1 contrasts the liberty Jesus offers with the yoke of bondage, which is a reference to the law as a means of salvation. Galatians 5 1 Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Being yoked to Jesus emphasizes obedience and commitment to follow in his footsteps and to participate in his mission. While we cannot hope to add anything to the salvation that Jesus won for us on the cross, we can become his ambassadors and share the good news with those around us. Jesus' interpretation of the law, as demonstrated in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5 and 6 and 7, is even more radical than the Pharisees take on it. It requires heart surgery and transforms our motives. And his yoke is easy and his burden is light, as we have already read in Matthew 11 verse 30. And so to finish the day, what a wonderful promise. Rest for your souls. How have you experienced that rest? What is it like? By focusing on Jesus and on what he offers us, how can we begin to know that rest? This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. It's supported by the Sabbath School Department and Hope Channel Australia and is rebroadcast by Christian Record Services and through podcasts at It Is Written in the United States, Hope Channel Germany and through Apple iTunes and SoundCloud. Remember, God is always faithful.